This video will cover the pitch controls of the audio oscillator that we have right here, as well as the sub oscillator inside of the synth as well. If you're already familiar with how traditional oscillators inside of normal synthesizers would work, this interface should feel pretty familiar to you, but I just wanted to make a short video on it just so that everyone is on the same page. So the first of our controllers will be this octave knob. Um, we have the sample loaded in from the previous video right here. I'm just gonna bring that back to the beginning of the synth, which sounds like this. And actually, let's go ahead and just change it to one of our other loop modes. Let's just do the forward loop, something like that. And it sounds like this. And the first of these controls will be this octave, which will just shift the uh, sample's root note up or down 12 semitones. So if we wanted to move a full octave down on the keyboard, we just pull it down like this. And now our sample played the same note, was that like this. And alternatively, if we wanted to boost it by 12 semitones, we could do that as well. Just sound a lot more high pitched. The next one of these controls will shift the root note by one note on the keyboard. This is referred to as a half step or a semitone. And that'd be the equivalent of moving from one white key to the black key on a keyboard instead of moving from one white key to a white key. So it's just moving it by one note. So that would sound like this. The next section is gonna be the tune knob right here. This will just shift it kind of in between a note. So it's not gonna shift it by a full semitone like it would here. It's just gonna shift it by a little bit. This is great for kind of creating phasing sounds or any sort of light pitch shifting effects. So that sounds like this. So it's kind of a real subtle pitch shift, but this can be useful for either tuning a sound to another sound or uh, kind of using the sub oscillator to create a phasing sort of effect. The final knob on here is gonna be the keyboard tracking. This affects how much an audio sample is mapped to the keyboard's root pitch. So if you're looking for every note of the keyboard to sound the same, let's say for example, you're making a kick drum inside of the synthesizer and you don't really care which key is hit, um, you just wanna play the sample whenever a key is hit, you can pull this all the way down and every note will play the same note on the keyboard. And I'm playing kind of the top note on my keyboard here then also the bottom note. And they sound the same because the keyboard tracking is gonna be turned all the way down. You can even kind of go in between as well to kind of create slightly pitched effects. Um, this can be great for sort of some atonal sounds as well. But if you wanna keep things melodic, I would definitely keep this up at 100%. So that has the oscillator pitch controls out of the way. Now we can move on to the sub oscillator section. And I think kind of the easiest way to hear what this sounds like is to just actually turn off our audio oscillator right here, um, which we could do by just bringing this level knob all the way down. And to start the sub oscillator, all you have to do is hit this oscillator on button right here. And whenever it's illuminated, that means it's turned on. And now we should have a simple sine wave. So now that we have the sine wave, we can also use this octave knob to shift it up and down an octave. These sub oscillators are really, really helpful for using things like sine waves and adding them on top of a granular sound to create a nice sub bass. You can create really full and filled out sounds. But we don't just have a sine wave in here, we also have other waveforms as well. We have a triangle wave right here, which will sound like this. So a bit more harmonics. A saw wave right here a square wave, which sounds quite a bit more harmonic and round than the other ones. A uh, noise wave right here. It's almost like a bit crushed noise wave. Another kind of random oscillator. And these are really, really great for kind of adding a little bit of ambience to a sound. But it doesn't just end there. We also have this mod control as well. And what this does is it kind of affects the oscillator in various different ways. For example, on these noises, it almost acts as like a low pass filter. And same thing with this other noise. And then on the square wave, it would act as like a pulse width modulation, which will control the peaks in between this point point on the oscillator and this point. So if you wanted to make it smaller here, uh, it would sound like this. And then with these various other oscillators as well, it can have various different effects. Like in that case, it's kind of a low pass filter. Same with the uh, triangle wave here. It's almost kind of removing the overtones in the sound, so it's acting a little bit more than a high pass filter would. Um, it's doing a bit more to kind of adjust the way that the sound is oscillating. And let's take the sub oscillator, bring it back to its default position right here. So mod at 50%, octave at two, and down to the uh, sine wave, for example. And let's actually bring that down an octave so that we kind of have a lower bass note, which just sounds like this on its own. And then we'll kind of blend uh, that in with the initial synth sound that we had.
So it kind of fattens up the sound a bit. So if we played it without it, it would sound like this. And with. So this is really great to add a bit more heaviness to a sound, um, especially if you're trying to help it fill out a mix a little bit more. So that finishes up our discussion on the pitch controls and sub oscillator inside of grain. Thanks, and I will see you in the next video.